today on Israel IOM Insider, the right-wing Zionist organization Im Tirtzu has accused the left-wing NGO breaking the silence of being a foreign agent based on the funding it receives from foreign sources. As a result, some have called for breaking the silence to be declared illegal, while others have expressed support for the organization. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Moshe Yalon has banned the group from participating in IDF-related activities, and Education Minister Naftali Bennett has banned the group from Israeli schools. With me in the studio to discuss this, contributor Ruthie Bloom and editor Steve Ganot. Hi, and thank you for joining me. Hi, Litan. Uh, so can you please elaborate on what is Breaking the Silence? Sure. So Breaking the Silence is an NGO. It's an organization of soldiers and former soldiers who talk about um, abuses of the IDF. They talk about their experiences in the IDF, and in particular about cases where um, they were made to violate the, the ethics of the IDF and um, maybe international law in different cases, mm -hmm. um, they're bringing the bad you know, stories, the yeah. stories that shouldn't <coughs> happen um, to the attention of the public. Yeah, and the giving lectures not only in Israel, but all across the world. That's right, they, both. I mean, they, they give lectures in Israel and Hebrew, and they publish books in Hebrew, but also in, uh, in foreign languages, and they go overseas, and they talk about all of this overseas, which is part of the problematics. Mm -hmm. And what is the problem with that, uh, Ruthie? The problem is the content of their message. Their message, and because they are former soldiers and officers in the IDF, their message that the Israeli army commits some kind of war crimes on a regular basis is A, false, and B, extremely harmful um, considering the international climate of BDS and uh, anti-Israel um, activism mm -hmm. that's okay. going on. I, and also, sta they're also standing the, the entire idea for being immoral. Well, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. I actually disagree with, with what, what Ruthie is saying. I think that the, the problem is not the content. Um, actually, um, Yaakov Amidror, the uh, form, former um, um, national security advisor, mm -hmm. uh, has said that their content is fine. They, you know, you want to talk about abuses? We should talk about abuses. We need to bring these to the attention of the army. And uh, you know, if things need to be changed or you need to prosecute in, in certain cases, um, that's a very important. And a number of other generals have said the same thing, that what they say um, is very important. And you know what? It doesn't have the ring of, of falsehood. I think that a lot of the, uh, not necessarily in every case, but in a lot of cases, what they're saying is true. That's not the problem. But Hold on. The problem, <laughs> the problem is that, uh, it, first of all, the foreign funding, we'll, we'll talk about that. And the fact that they are, their main audience is the foreign press. Their main audience is uh, uh, college mm -hmm. campuses overseas, things like that. Okay, yes. when they should be bringing the, these problems to the attention of the IDF in ways that the that the stories can be investigated, um, they're not doing that. Yeah. So that, and so it's important to say that the IDF is investigating uh, these cases, and and the cases Israeli that, society well, is not really it, taking the IDF, in those. The IDF investigates cases when it can, mm -hmm. but uh, but the. Breaking the Silence organization doesn't necessarily give them a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. It just comes out with stories that can't really be checked. Maybe they're true, maybe they're not true. I, mean, I think in a lot of cases they are true. Uh, let me interject. Yeah. These are stories that can be checked. Some of them are partly true or, or even 100% true. But the address for such complaints of um, some kinds of human rights abuses on the part of individual officers and soldiers in the Israeli army. The address is the Israeli army, which takes complaints of the even the smallest kind extremely seriously. And uh, the, uh, listen, this is an army that is spent constantly investigating itself and being investigated by the International Criminal Court, by the Palestinians, by everyone. So when Breaking the Silence comes out with an old video showing uh, a couple of minutes of something and describing it, uh, the, uh, the case in point I'm making is they claim, Breaking the Silence has claimed that on a regular basis, IDF soldiers, if they want to watch a soccer game, um, go into a Palestinian home who has a you know satellite dish, blindfold the family and sit down and watch the game. Um, now, if there was such a case, and let's say there was, 
it was one. And if there was one such a case, every soldier involved would that's be punished and court-martialed. Okay, that's, that's, and not, that's not what I Maybe what let's I, talk a little bit about the, the, the funding. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Do uh, okay. does it that is it is it is it a problem that it's been funded by uh, foreign uh, governments, foreign organizations? Well, I think you know a lot of uh, NGOs on the left and on the right also get a lot of funding from foreign sources, from foreign donors, from sometimes foreign governments. So you know we have laws about that, and and uh, breaking the silence has been completely transparent. You can go to their website, see exactly how much money they've gotten from what organizations, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we actually. Uh, unfortunately misreported something about that. We said that there were, there's an organization, a Palestinian organization in Ramallah that uh, some of their European funding goes through. Now that I don't like. I don't know what's going on there, why, they, why this, foreign, this European funding has to go through a Palestinian organization. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good. But we said that, uh, we said that Breaking the Silence um, uh, covered that up, that they hid it, that and it's, it's not true. It's, it's right there on their website. You can just go and go and check. Yeah, and should the organization be banned from from schools? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think you know. I don't know why uh, political organizations, and it is a political organization. I don't know why political organizations have to have access to school to the public schools. Um, you know, maybe there there's a there's a place in uh, let's say in the twelfth grade when students are getting ready to go into the army. Um, to have debates about these issues, you know, students are already at that point. They're already adults. They're voting, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I don't. I don't really mind if if uh, political organizations are not allowed to to uh, have access to the public schools, as long as it's done evenly. As long as Imtir Tzu also can't go into the public schools, for example. Mm -hmm. Rufi, well, look, I, the reason I think that it's, I, I hate the word banned. What, what I think is that the education minister has the right to determine, as long as he's the minister, to determine um, both uh, issues related to curriculum and related to school lectures, visitors, trips, all that kind of thing. I think that's the purpose of having a government and having a minister in charge of that. So it's within his rights to decide, we don't want that element going around and talking to our schools. And the reason I happen to agree with that one, and not with banning Im Tirtsu, oh. if, if we were saying that if all things being equal, in other words, let's suppose you allow organizations in the schools, is that high school kids in particular in this country are preparing to go into the IDF. And it is one thing to have an organization that comes into the schools and says, you know what, you're moral people. We are under threat. We are a Zionist organization that says, you know what, this country is a democracy. It's a wonderful country. You have good reason to serve in the country. And quite another to have former soldiers come in and say, no, we're uh, not moral. We commit war crimes. It's, it's undermining. And aside from that fact, mm -hmm. it's a lie. Yes, we, without a doubt, we can continue mm -hmm. this discussion uh, for much longer. But we have only a few minutes. Ruthie Bloom, Steve Ganot, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, thank Lethal. And thank you for watching Israel, a Yom Insider. We'll see you next week.